How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. It's late Thursday night, I can't sleep, so I thought this was a great opportunity to do another video. And this one's all about how to save your precious hard-earned monies when you go to do your 3D printing. So to understand how you can save your precious money on 3D printing, you need to understand how these engines work. So basically, if you're uploading for SLS, usually it's priced on the bounding box. So if you design something that's really airy, like a big lattice structure that takes up lots of space, it's going to be really expensive because all of that powder and space that you're taking up fills up the bed and therefore they can't put other stuff in it, therefore they're going to charge you for that privilege. So one awesome way you can save money straight off the bat is to nest parts. Nesting parts means you pretty much get lots of different parts and put them together in the same uploaded STL file for printing. This saves you money on various fronts. One, it makes them all into the same tightly nested area, so therefore the bounding box is much smaller. And two, you only get hit with one setup fee. Most places will have, you know, maybe $35 setup fee. So if you upload one file, then another file, then another, you're getting hit again and again and again with setup. You just want to do it once with a nested STL file. So you can do that with Mesh Mixer very easily. Just grab the files you need from a folder, drag them into Mesh Mixer, and then use the transform tool to just move them where you want, near each other, not touching, be very careful that they're not intersecting each other. Move them closely and then combine them again, export that STL file and then upload that file. Very simple and will save you a lot of money straight off the bat. The next trick is if you have a very large print that you need to do, especially in SLS. And this trick is called hollowing. I've explained it before in my other Mesh Mixer videos, but essentially what you're doing is getting a shape and giving it a thick skin or shell and removing the insides. If you poke some holes in it, then when they do the SLS print, they can pour the powder that they didn't sinter out of the print. You get a print that's, for a start, much lighter, so you don't need it to be strong all the time. So it's much lighter, but therefore it uses less powder and costs you less money. So definitely worth doing, it's very easy to do in Mesh Mixer and great to do if you're doing something very artistic or it doesn't need much strength to it, there's no point it being solid. Something else to watch out for when uploading parts is part orientation. So this isn't such a big deal for engineering parts, often they'll be on the flat, you know, X, Y, Z plane. But if you're doing organic freehand modelling, sometimes you'll design something at a weird angle, like a diagonal. And when you upload it to an engine, some quoting engines won't orientate parts for the lowest price and most economical print. So they'll give you a bounding box, for example, if it's a weird diagonal angle, that's huge, when really a bounding box should be really small. And that's one thing that can really increase your quote cost for no real reason. And the big one for saving money is to fix your files before uploading. Often companies just won't accept bad STL files for printing, but if they do accept bad STL files, they no doubt charge you money, big bucks, to fix your files. And that's because fixing STL files is a real pain in the ass. No 3D printing company wants to do it. So highly recommend checking your files with Netfab, um, either their cloud service or so upload it to cloud.netfab.com or download the free Netfab version. Please note that the free version of Netfab does not combine shells, so it doesn't fully fix files. To do that, you need to use their cloud service or buy their premium version for like $300 or something from Netfab Private, which they wouldn't sell me because I work at a 3D printing company, so. Thanks, Netfab. Anyway, that's one thing. Fix your files before uploading, otherwise you'll be hit with a massive fee. <laughs> and then finally, for those power users out there, um, there's ways to combine these methods. So what you can do is essentially make your own custom Airfix kit, and you can get the files that you want to hollow, combine them in with files that maybe are very small, and then use little struts to join them together. So when you receive the parts, they're all suspended with each other, the little, you know, little rods, you just break away and then assemble. So that helps you a lot because often these 3D printing places can sometimes lose very small parts. They'll try their best not to, but um, it can happen. So if you join them all together with little rods, it's like your own Airfix kit and it works very well for very small prints. And that's basically it. Nice and simple for this one. I'm going to go to bed now because I got this off my chest. And you can use your hard earned extra monies that you saved to go buy some Cheetos or Arduinos or whatever you would spend it on. I don't know. And yeah, thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again here soon on Maker's Muse. Bye.